In this video, I'll be taking apart the Huawei Mate 60 Pro. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. This phone was also put through a durability and drop test. If you're interested in seeing that video, you can click on the iCard on the top right of this video or the link in the description. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now a lot of heat and isopropyl alcohol will be needed to pry the screen off, since the adhesive underneath the screen is extremely strong. While prying the screen off, I must have damaged it somewhere, since the screen no longer displays properly. So if any type of repairs are needed on the device, aside from the screen requiring you to pry the screen off, there is a high chance of damaging the screen. So next, the screen has to be lifted over, but be careful since the flex cable is still attached to the main board. There's a single Phillips screw which needs to be removed, that's holding down the cover for the screen cable connector. Now the cable for the screen can be disconnected from the main board. There's a large copper vapor chamber on the back of the screen, and the copper vapor chamber helps to transfer heat. There's also a cutout for the fingerprint sensor, as well as the proximity sensor. There are now 17 more Phillips screws which need to be removed. Here's a look at the motherboard cover. There's some thermal paste to help transfer heat. We can see more thermal paste on the other side, as well as some graphite film on the top corner. Now we can proceed to disconnect the flex cables. The coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping it off. There are two Phillips screws holding down the main board. Looking at this side of the main board, we can see the 13 megapixel front facing camera as well as the 3D depth camera. And in between those is the TOF sensor. The proximity sensor is located here and there's a secondary microphone underneath this shield. The main camera and telephoto camera cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. And there's more thermal paste on the shield to help transfer heat. Here's a better look with the shield covers removed. We can see a thermal pad on top of the RAM and processor, as well as these chips. And here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. Looking at the other side, we can see the infrared or IR blaster on the top corner, as well as the 50 megapixel primary camera, the 12 megapixel ultra wide, and the 48 megapixel telephoto lens. The main camera and telephoto lens are the only ones with OIS or optical image stabilization. To disconnect the cable for the ultra-wide lens, as well as the 3D depth and front-facing camera, these metal covers have to be lifted up and removed, and then the cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. There are two more Phillips screws that have to be removed. The other end of the coaxial cable cannot be disconnected.
Here's a better look at the subboard cover. There's a single Phillips screw that's holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we can see the primary microphone located here, and the fingerprint scanner is located here, which is connected from the back side. Here's the connector for the fingerprint scanner. Here's a closer look at the bottom speaker. This flex cable connects the charger port, the subboard, and the SIM reader to the main board. We can see a red rubber gasket around the charger port itself. And looking at the other side, we can see that the SIM reader itself is replaceable, and this flex cable can be disconnected from the bottom of the SIM reader. Now moving on to the battery. To pry the battery off, we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol, and apply it to the edges of the battery, and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Now that the battery has been removed, we can see the wireless charging coil, and the flex cable and connector for that is over here. There are 5 Phillips screws which are holding down the back plastic cover. This flex cable is for the LED flash on the back, the back light sensor, the laser autofocus, as well as an additional microphone located here. The flex cable down here is for the NFC antenna, which is incorporated in the camera bezel. This flex cable is for an antenna, and this flex cable is for the volume keys and power button. If you need to replace either of those, you'd have to remove the plastic brackets that are inside the frame by just pulling them out, which would then give you access to removing those flex cables. The earpiece speaker is located on top, which is held down with some adhesive, and the same goes for the vibrator motor on the bottom corner. If you're ever worried about accidentally inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, either on the bottom of the frame or on the top, you won't have to worry since both microphones and filters are seated above the hole, so there's no way they would get damaged. And finally, if you needed to replace the camera bezel or back glass camera lens cover, you just need to apply heat to loosen up the adhesive underneath and gently pry it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5 out of 10. Now it's time to put it back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the screen. Once the screen is reapplied, you can power on the phone and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.